Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. This is the third and final video of two phase flow that includes a particular volume force or body force. We have been working with this two phase flow since last two videos and I'll put those two videos in the description box. If you have missed the earlier videos, then you need to watch those two videos in order to understand this particular topic. So let us move ahead with the basic introduction to this particular model so that even if you have missed the earlier videos, you can at least correlate you have if you have the knowledge of COMSOL. So here we have been working with a simple two phase flow where the two phases are water and oil and we have we have been working with phase field model. So this is the phase field model for the interface and this is the laminar flow for the basic fluid flow equation. We have an inlet here and we have the outlet at the right side and the volume force has been added and this particular volume force is coming from the electric field and for that electric field we are basically solving the electrostatics equation. So in electrostatics if we go to the dependent variable you can see the dependent variable or the potential voltage is given by V and this V is coming here in the volume force and we actually write Fx and Fy. Fx is force component along x direction. Similarly, Fy is along y direction. So in the variable, those terms are defined. If we can see those terms are defined as derivatives of some term 1, 1, 1, 2, term 2, 1 and term 2, 2. So what are those term 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1 and 2, 2? So basically those are the Maxwell stresses and we have been actually taking the divergence of the Maxwell stresses to calculate this Fx and Fy. But in order to understand this particular topic in a detailed manner, I have made a simple presentation for all of you. So initially let us recapitulate about the stress. So a stress is something which has two different directions Otherwise, it is similar to pressure. That means it has an unit of force per meter, meter square or Newton per meter square because the unit of force is Newton and it has two directions and one particular direction. Suppose this sigma ij where i is a direction and j is another direction. Here i is the direction of the surface or you can say the vector orient denoting the surface and this j denotes the direction of the force. So if we have force per area then the force is also a vector and area is another vector. So force will come with its own direction, area will also come with its own direction and these two directions may not be necessarily be the same and that's why in order to define stress, we need two different directions. Suppose here we have different components of the stresses along x, y and z axis. And we denote this particular term by sigma xx. That basically means this stress is acting on this yellow col colored plane and this yellow colored plane has a direction along x axis. So the direction of the surface is x. So the first x is indicating the direction of the surface which is given by this yellow line. This yellow line what you can see. And the other direction is for the force. If you can see the force is also acting along x direction. So to understand this particular stress we define two directions and both are x and x. Now coming to this red line, if you see the direction of the force is along y direction. So the last thing is y, I mean the second direction is y and on which plane this force is basically acting. So if you see this force is again acting on this 
x directional plane and this is a kind of shear stress because it is acting parallel to the surface and that's why this is a shear stress and it is indicated by x1. Similarly, other stresses can also have their individual direction for area and also the direction for force. So we can see we we may have in three dimension we may have nine different components of this particular stress and these components may be different from each other and that's why we need to understand about all the components and from there we will be calculating the forces. But in, in before we move on to the calculation of forces, if you see, we from this particular stress term, we can actually resolve the direction of force. And from that direction, we can actually think about the divergence. I will come to it in the upcoming slides, then it will be more clear to you. But before that, I have just jotted down the expression of the Maxwell stresses. So this is the basic expression for the Maxwell stress where the left hand term is coming for the electric field and the right hand term is coming for the magnetic field. So overall the Maxwell stress is from the coming from the contribution of both electric and magnetic field. But for the time being we are assuming that it has an uniform magnetic field. So as it is an uniform magnetic field, the derivatives of magnetic field along any possible direction can be considered as zero and that's why we can actually neglect this term for this particular simulation. So we are bothered about this particular terminology, this particular expression actually and this expression if we resolve into different direction, it comes like this. So instead of sigma, we are now denoting it as t. So in different direction, we have, I mean, we have actually expressions at different direction. And for the time being, we'll be neglecting all the magnetic field terms. So we'll have only these terms. Now, sometimes we have symmetry of this. So this along the diagonal line, those things are called normal stresses because if you see sigma xx, sigma yy in all and sigma zz, in all the cases, the forces are actually penetrating the surface or it is acting normal to the surface and that's why this is called normal stresses. And other stresses, those are basically shear stress and in some of the cases, we get a symmetric kind of matrix where the upper triangular matrix is equal to the lower triangular matrix and for this particular simulation we have assumed that this is a kind of symmetric case and also we are solving in two dimensions so we don't have any z direction so these terms are cancelled our matrix reduces to four terms that is sigma xx, sigma xy, sigma yx and sigma yy. So those are the stresses acting. So up to this point, we understood about the stresses, about the different directions. And now let us try to understand from these stresses, how exactly we can calculate forces and we can actually plug in the forces in the console so that we can have the effect of electric field on our flow field. So for that, what I have taken, I have taken a kind of Einstein notation formula, but this is complicated to understand. And as you always see, I always try to make things in and I make things expressive in a simple manner. So <clears throat> for the understanding purpose, we are not going into this complex Einstein notation. We are going to see the final expression for the divergence. So here if you see, if you are taking divergence of a stress, so here stress is given by tau, so this tau, sigma, t all are same. You can express by different notations. I have taken those images from different sources and that's why these things are different but all are expressing stress. So in this case, what you have to see, you will have 
for the x i mean when we are taking the divergence we are basically getting the force so this is the force along x direction and this is the force along y direction so when we are calculating force along x direction then we are taking sigma xx sigma yx that means these two stresses and they are derivative the first derivative with respect to x and the second derivative with respect to y when we are calculating y directional force it will be the this two term the first derivative will be with respect to x second derivative will be with respect to y so if we have this two x these things is basically fx and this is basically fy and we have to actually include this term in our COMSOL simulation and that is what it was written in this if you see this term 1 1 basically term x x term 2 2 is basically term y y or sigma y y or t y y and similarly this is sigma x y and sigma y x for symmetric case these two things may be equal and that is why you see I have actually these two things are equal if you see it's a multiplication of ex and ey and having epsilon 0 and epsilon r term so let us just quickly see the expression uh, expression for xx so for xy actually for xy it is you can see epsilon 0 ex ey so for a material in oil with this epsilon 0 1 epsilon r will be added and that's why again epsilon 0 epsilon r ex ey and that is what we have written you see epsilon 0 epsilon r ex ey for 2 1 also the same epsilon 0 epsilon r ex and ey now let us see what is the expression for the normal stresses so here it is basically txx so if you just pause the video try to look at the expression and then if you compare it with this expression you will find these things are equal and for your understanding i will request you to pause the video and try to calculate it try to actually see whether these two things are equal or not it it, it is equal because we have taken the stresses and then what I have done, I have taken, uh, I mean this is the fx term, that is the derivative term which is here in, in this particular slide. So those are the terms basically taken in fx and these are the terms basically taken in fy. So this is how we actually, we actually given the force term in, a, in, in an electric field based two phase flow and if you see the result now let us look at the electric field potential so one important thing I would like to tell you so the only difference in terms of Maxwell stresses is these are the two droplets and where it, these droplets have different permittivity compared to the other space so basically here we have what these two are water droplet and the continuous phase is oil so water has a different permittivity and oil has a different permittivity so we have actually enlisted those permittivity if you see uh, permittivity of oil is 2.2 whereas permittivity of water is 80 so you can see the electric field distribution will change as we actually change the actually as we actually change the position of this oil droplet so as we move on with time the droplets are flowing ahead along along with the droplet you can see the distribution of electric field is also changing because the electric field distribution depends on permittivity because that the last day I have shown in the last lecture actually the link will be in the description box we have actually explained what is permittivity per, to, to understand permittivity you have to understand induction 
So if you have a dielectric material, you put it across an electric field, then what happens that electric field tries to induce polarization in that dielectric material if the if the I mean if, if the polarity we can gain polarity very easily then we will say it has less resistance and the permittivity will be defined such a way so let me just type here so let me type dielectric permittivity that will be better wikipedia so they have a nice explanation so here if you see it is related to the electric field displacement d equal to epsilon into e now from the mathematics you see if you have a low electric field and a high epsilon then you will have a high d so what basically d means this dielectric field displacement field means suppose this is a particular dielectric material and the charges are randomly oriented and that's why it does not have any resultant charge but what happens when we put an electric field across it you, you can see the charges are now oriented the negative charges are near to the positive electrode and the positive charges are near to the negative electrode so this phenomenon is called polarization and if epsilon is very high at a very low electric field it will happen readily now if it happens readily then you will have orientation of the charge molecules and thereby the electric field properties will change so if you have two materials those are connected with each other like water and air water and oil water has higher epsilon and oil has lower epsilon so the electric field distribution will obviously be different and that is what i was actually telling now if you see this is the yeah uh, so this is how two water droplets are different when it moves across it actually coalesces and as it is coalescing the electric field distribution is also changing see this is how it is changing if you see and as the electric field is changing the stress around is also changing so we can you can actually play around with the results and you can visualize the effect of electric field so today uh, i stop here i guess this series was helpful so we made three different videos on this particular two phase flow and i will be making more videos but with volume force this series i'm ending here I'll come up with other form of two-phase flow that will be helpful for your research and learning purposes. But before we end this particular video, I would like to request you to subscribe to this channel because if you subscribe to us, then we'll get more motivation to upload videos. At the same time, if you have any specific queries for your research related problem, then you can write to us in the given email ID and I will get back to you. Thank you.